Welcome to the Episcopal Church of Our Savior of Madison County on this Wednesday, June the 6th. We are pleased that you are joining us for our daily evening prayer. Let my prayer be set forth in your sight as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I invite you to join me if you are using the Book of Common Prayer and saying together, O Gracious Light, found on page 118 of the Book of Common Prayer. O Gracious Light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed. Now, as we come to the setting of the sun and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. The psalm appointed for this evening is Psalm 119, verses 73 to 96. It is found in the Book of Common Prayer, beginning on page 769. Your hands have made me and fashioned me. Give me understanding that I may learn your commandments. Those who fear you will be glad when they see me, because I trust in your word. I know, O oh Lord, that your judgments are right, and that in faithfulness you have afflicted me. Let your loving kindness be my comfort, as you have promised to your servant. Let your compassion come to me, that I may live, for your law is my delight. Let the arrogant be put to shame for they wrong me with lies, but I will meditate on your commandments. Let those who fear you turn to me, and also those who know your decree. Let my heart be sound in your statutes, that I may not be put to shame. My soul has longed for your salvation, that I may not be put to shame. My soul has longed for your salvation. I have put my hope in your word. My eyes have failed from watching for your promise. And I say, when will you comfort me? I have become like a leather flask in the smoke, but I have not forgotten your statutes. How much longer must I wait? When will you give judgment against those who persecute me? The proud have dug pits for me. They do not keep your law. All your commandments are true. Help me, for they persecute me with lies. They had made almost an end of me on earth. 
but I have not forsaken your commandments. In your loving kindness, receive me that I may keep the decrees of your mouth. O Lord, your word is everlasting. It stands firm in the heavens. Your faithfulness remains from one generation to another. You establish the earth and it abides. By your decree, these continue to this day, for all things are your servants. If my delight has not been in your law, I should have perished in my affliction. I will never forget your commandments, because by them you give me life. I am yours, oh, that you would save me, for I study your commandments. Though the wicked lie in wait to destroy me, I will apply my mind to your decrees. I will see that all things come to an end, but your commandments has no bounds. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our reading from the epistle this evening is from Galatians chapter 5, verses 1 through 15. For freedom, Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore. And do not just submit again to a yoke of slavery. Listen, I, Paul, am telling you that if you let yourselves be circumcised, Christ will be of no benefit to you. Once again, I testify to every man who lets himself be circumcised that he is obligated to obey the entire law. You who want to be justified by the law have cut yourselves off from Christ. You have fallen away from grace, for through the Spirit, by faith, we eagerly wait for the hope of righteousness. For in Jesus Christ, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision counts for anything. The only thing that counts is faith working through love. You were running well. You prevent, who prevented you from obeying the truth? Such persuasion does not come from the one who calls you. A little least yeast leavens the whole batch of dough. I am confident about you in the Lord. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. A song of Christ's humility. Though in the form of God. Christ himself did not cling to equality with God, but emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, and was born in human likeness. Being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient uh, to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and given him the name above every name that at the name of Jesus, every kneel shall bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord in the glory of God the Father. The gospel lesson this evening is from Matthew chapter 16, verses 1 through 12. The Pharisees and Sadducees came, and to test Jesus, they asked him to show them a sign from heaven. He answered them, when it is evening, you say, it will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning, it will be stormy tomorrow, for the sky is red and threatening. You know how to interpret the appearance of the sky, but you cannot interpret the signs of the time. An evil and adulterous generation asks for a sign, but no sign will be given to it except the sign of Jonah. Then he left them and went away. When the disciples reached the other side, they had forgotten to bring any bread. Jesus said to them, watch out and be aware of the yeast of the Pharisees and Sadducees. They said to one another, is it because we have brought no bread? And becoming aware of it, Jesus said, you of little faith, why are you talking about having no bread? Do you still not perceive 
Do you not remember the five loaves of the 5,000 and how many baskets you gathered? Or the seven loaves for the 4,000 and how many baskets you gathered? How could you fail to perceive that I was not speaking about bread? Beware of the yeast of the Pharisees and Sadducees. Then they understood that he had not told them to be aware of the yeast of bread, but of the teaching of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. The gospel of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Today, in our church calendar, we remember Millennia the Elder, who is recognized as a saint in the church, especially the Eastern Church. She was born in Spain in the year 341 and was the daughter of a Roman council. And at the young age of 14, she was married to a proconsul and prefect of Rome and moved with her husband to Rome. Unfortunately, she was widowed only eight years later at the age of 22. She was among the richest women of her day. She entrusted the care of her son to a trustee, and then she moved with all her household goods to Alexandria in Egypt. There, she sold all of her household goods. She became friends with religious men and women who lived in the desert. She made pilgrimages herself into the Nitrian desert. She was fluent and well-read in both Latin and Greek and studied under some of the greatest Christian scholars living at that time. And she later moved to Jerusalem in Palestine. She was incredibly compassionate toward the poor and used her wealth to help the poor and those in the greatest need. And it is said that she had used her wealth to feed 5,000 people over the course of three days. In Palestine, she used her wealth to support the desert um, monastics and she herself dressed in slaves' clothing. When she was brought before a judge about her clothing, she defended herself by saying she was a slave of Christ. She also used her wealth to establish a convent for women on the Mount of Olives. It included more than 50 women. These faithful monastic women provided hospitality to strangers, to visitors, to clergy, they also engaged in a wide array of charitable works. And she also played a major role in building peace and unity within the Christian church at that time. She knew bishops and priests and Christian scholars and was very influential in working toward unity within the church. It's interesting that she grew up at a time when members of the nobility and social elites at that time were expected to take their Christian faith very seriously. And she did just that. Her social network was one of the most important in the fourth and fifth century Christianity. Her influence extended far and wide from Spain all the way to Persia, which is modern day Iran. When she was 60, she returned to Rome, and there she promoted and taught the values of living an aesthetic and peace-loving life. Before she died in Rome, she arranged for all her wealth to be sent to Jerusalem. I think it's so important that we learn about St. Um, Millennia, a millennia for several reasons. One, it's a story of a remarkable woman, a remarkably devout Christian who truly followed the commandments. And if you listen to the words of our psalm today, it talks about the psalmist professing his commitment to following the commandments um, of, of 
um, their faith. And she lived, that became um, the way she lived all her adult life. She also became a very, very um, important evangelist in bringing people to the Christian faith. And I think today among many young people, there is a movement called um, minimalism, that people are understanding that there's less is more, that there's a lot of benefit from just not having a lot of material possessions, that we just own only what we need. And that movement of minimalism, I think, is a very good thing. But we need to go beyond that. We need to not only live very simply and modestly with only what we need, we have to be actively engaged in helping those in need. And for anybody who has wealth, for them to share that wealth, to share their wealth, to help people in great, great need. And I was very inspired in hearing a story recently in the news of um, a man who um, became independently wealthy. He was college educated. And as he began to reflect on his life, he began to realize all the privileges that he had had that other people didn't have. He was white. He was able to go to college. He had the resources to set up a business. He was very successful in that business. And he realized that there were many other people that never had those opportunities. And so he decided to assist a school in the most um, poorest region of Chicago, a school that was predominantly um, African-American and minority students, impoverished students who had very, very dedicated teachers and a principal. And he decided that he was going to donate his wealth to send every single student in that school to college for free. He would pay for their tuition. He would pay for their room and board. He would pay for their books. And he also approached other millionaires that he knew. And he told them about what he was doing. His examples inspired them. So now several other millionaires have said, we want to be part of this project. We want to help. And so now what is even more remarkable is they have the funds not only to send every single student to college from that high school, they're sending the parents of those kids, parents who work often night shifts at minimum wages and going without food in order that they can feed their own children, just scrimping and saving, living on the edge and never imagining that they themselves would go to college but praying daily that at least their kids could go to college and have a better life. This is an example of the transformative power of Christian love, compassionate kindness, caring for your neighbor, using whatever wealth you have in ways that help others. And I just hope that this story of um, St. Millennia, as well as um, you know, this gentleman, can inspire us all. Um, we can all do something to help people that are hungry, that are homeless, that are in need in our communities. Amen. Let us say together the Song of Simeon, found in the Book of Common Prayer on page 120. Lord, you now have set your servant free to go in peace as you have promised. For these eyes of mine have seen the Savior, whom you've prepared for all the world to see, a light to enlighten the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let us say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. 
he descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We will use suffrages set A, found on page 121. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us by your Holy Spirit. The collect today for Melania the Elder, monastic. Most high and merciful God, who called your servant Melania to forsake earthly comforts in order to devote herself to studying the scriptures and to welcoming the poor. Instruct us in the ways of poverty and the grace of hospitality that we might comfort those who have no place to rest and teach the way of your love through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A prayer for peace. God of the nations, you are our strength and hope in times of trouble. Increase in every heart the love of peace. Give wisdom to all leaders who take counsel for the world's well-being, that war may cease and that peace abounds. Protect the vulnerable and all in harm's way, especially those who struggle to find places of safety and refuge. In your holy name, we pray. Be our light in the darkness, O Lord, and in your great mercy, defend us from all perils and dangers of this night for the love of your only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus, stay with us, for evening is at hand and the day is past. Be our companion in the way. Kindle our hearts and awaken hope that we may know you as you are revealed in scripture and the breaking of bread. Grant this for the sake of your love. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night and give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ. Give rest to the weary. Bless the dying. Soothe the suffering. Pity the afflicted, shield the joyous, and all for your love's sake. Amen. I invite your prayers and intercessions either privately or out loud at this time. We pray for the repose of the soul of Anne Rogers, mother of Cindy Sigmund, director of the Cathedral Domain. May she Rest eternally in your love and rise in glory. Let us say together the general thanksgiving found on page 125. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, 
We, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for your creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by your Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercy that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved son that when two or three are gathered in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O oh Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Thank you for joining us. I hope you will join us um, this coming Sunday, June 12th. We will be having a parish meeting following the service in which we invite everybody to give us some feedback about the priorities that we should have in moving forward in our ministry and mission in serving others in Madison County and beyond. May you be blessed and have a joyful week.